This week on the Computer Chronicles, high-speed internet. We'll show you how to improve your web surfing performance, even with a slower dial-up modem. If you're ready to spend a few extra bucks, DSL may be the solution for you. We'll look at an easy-to-install DSL option. If you want the fastest broadband connection out there, you want a cable modem. We'll show you how that works. Plus a high-speed internet solution that almost anyone can get, a satellite service called DirectPC. And my pick of the week, fast and realistic action on a virtual pool table. It's all coming up next on The Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com, with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schaffe. Well, we're all on the Internet now, but unless you're lucky enough to live in the right place or you live at work, you're probably creeping along with a 28.8 or 56K dial-up modem at home, waiting while web pages slowly fill your computer screen. It doesn't have to be that way. Today, there are lots of options for speeding up your Internet service, and while that usually means using DSL, cable, or satellite services, you can speed up your Internet browsing even with your existing dial-up telephone modem. And here to show us how to do that is Brian Underdahl, author of several books, 47 in fact, including this one, The Internet Bible. Uh, Brian, let's talk about some of the options we have. First of all, you can make adjustments in your browser, right, to make it work faster. Right, you, you certainly can. Uh, Internet Explorer, for example, and Netscape, uh, you can adjust things like your uh, cache settings, your history settings, and, and so on. Okay. All, uh, all of which can speed up performance. Exactly. Where, where do you find these things in IE, for example? Let, let's talk about adjusting cache. Well, the easiest thing, most people uh, have a problem finding some of these settings because right. they change it in every version of IE. So the easiest thing is, first of all, start by right-clicking on the Internet Explorer icon on okay. your desktop. Choose Properties. Then so you we're get, into Internet Properties. You get internet Properties. And then on the General tab here, you can go to the Settings button, and that gets you into your cache settings. Okay, so amount of disk space to use, and you can adjust the cache. And what and should you do to get optimal performance? Then? Well, you need to play around a little, <laughs> uh, obviously. Most browsers don't. Uh, use a lot of memory uh, very well. Right. So you may need a setting in the area of 5 to 20 megabytes. So that might be optimum 5 to 20? Probably. Okay. Yeah. And you, you're set at 62 right now, though, I saw. That's <laughs> only because uh, I'm also running uh, okay. NetSonic. Now, now, what about history? That's another setting that could affect what's going on, right? Right, because your history setting uh, is the number of days that pages are kept in the cache. Right. And you probably go and visit a lot of the same web pages uh, over and over again. So keeping them in your history cache uh, will speed up your browsing. Got it. Because uh, it's sitting there and you're not going out and pulling it down every time. Right. So you probably want that set to 20 okay. to 30 days. What about cookies? Now, a lot of people are paranoid about cookies, but the fact of the matter is it speeds things up, doesn't it? Well, I if you just enable cookies, you don't have to deal with all these prompts. Right. A lot of websites, you can't actually uh, use the website unless you uh, enable cookies or unless you at least accept them. Yeah. Now, Internet Explorer 5, uh, they've done their best to hide the cookie <laughs> settings. All right, so if you want to change those, what do you do? Well, you need to go over here to the Security tab, uh -huh. and then you need to click on Custom Level, and then you go down. Uh, and they're down. Yep. Right. Able, disable, etc. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, you need to make sure that you enable that. And actually, most of these settings, uh, you need to set them on enable. Right. Because if you set them on prompt or disable, you're okay. going to be slower. All right. Now, obviously, multimedia stuff, all the graphics that go on there take a lot of time. You can disable a lot of that, too, to speed things up, can't you? You certainly can, but it's not necessarily a good idea. So the same idea under Internet Properties, just where do you go? Well, you go to Advanced, and then you, oh, you, click, yeah. you, you click down a couple, and you got Multimedia. One of the problems with uh, disabling some of these things 
is that a lot of web pages use image maps. And you're not going to know what's going on if you, you disable it. You don't have anything yeah. to click on. So, so maybe experiment a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about a couple other things you can do. First of all, if you have an antivirus program, that's a good idea, but that's probably going to slow performance down too, isn't it? Oh, exactly, because it has to scan the pages before uh, you actually can download them. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, but on the other hand, you know, you need the... Uh, <laughs> Speed versus safety. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let, let's talk about the cache again. Now, you, you mentioned NetSonic. That's a pretty cool program that actually does intelligent management of your cache for you. So show how that works. Right. Well... Uh, we'll display NetSonic here. Okay. And NetSonic actually works with all the different browsers, and it uh, uh, takes uh, all probably uh, uh, up to a couple hundred megabytes uh -huh. uh, of disk space, uh, rather than the five uh, to twenty that a typical browser can handle. Mm -hmm. And so it uh, does a whole lot better job in terms of managing your disk cache. Okay, that's a downloadable. Right. And you can get NetSonic, and that'll do a, a sort of better intelligent job of managing cache. Exactly. Now, searching takes a lot of time, and you have something called Copernic, which you found, which right. is a pretty cool tool. Why don't you show us that? Right. Well, let me uh, hide NetSonic here. And uh, now Copernic is a tool that allows you to take uh, and execute a search on a number of different search engines all at the same time. It then takes the results, prioritizes them, and... All right, so I, there's actually a kind of cool graphic that comes up and shows how that works. So if you had Copernic, you're using all these search engines simultaneously, basically. Exactly. And, and then when the search is done, Copernic takes and prioritizes them so that you can actually go and find the ones that best match what your search yeah, phrase yeah. was. So instead of doing 10 sequential searches, you can do them all at the same time. Exactly. All right, last thing I want you to talk about, we've been talking about IE, but there's another browser out there a lot of people have never heard of. And in fact, it's about the fastest browser out there called Opera. Can you yes. show us that and explain it briefly? Okay. Um, let me stop that. Okay, and we'll go over here to Opera. Opera is a very small browser. It's very fast. It's uh, uh, available as a download from the web, like 1.3 megabytes compared to 26 right. to 40 for the other browsers. Uh, they don't use anyone else's uh, shared code, so uh, they are very fast. And uh, in the tests that I've done, they've uh, been 40 to 50 right. percent faster than so any. So forget uh, IE and Netscape, maybe use Opera. Right. And the, and the neat thing is you can try Opera for uh, 30 user days. Free. Free. And, and that's only, what, 30, 40 bucks to buy, right? 35. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, while you can do a lot of tweaking with your existing dial-up Internet service, you are, in fact, still limited to the data rate of your regular phone line. The only way to really speed things up is to get a faster connection. You have three options for doing that, basically, and we'll show you several. First of all, DSL. And here to help us do that is Kevin Grundy of Telocity. Uh, Kevin, first of all, for people who don't know, explain what DSL is. What's the acronym stand for, and why is it a big deal? Well, it's sort of arcane. It's called Digital Subscriber Line. Right. And it's really the, the buzzword for a technology that allows higher frequencies to ride on top of your existing phone line. So basically, you have your existing telephone line that's coming in, but this technology just squeeze a lot of data in there on top of your phone, on top, on top of, of your voice. And it won't affect your voice line. Got if it. you can, uh, at the same time you're having a phone conversation, you can still be cruising the net at a very high rate. Okay, now you guys at Telocity have a very interesting solution, which is this sort of uh, box, which is sort of like a modem, but I guess what you guys call it a gateway. That's right. And, and just let's, let's take a look at the back here, because it's kind of cool. There's lots of options for how you connect this to your PC. You don't have to open up, stick a card, do all that stuff, right? No, in fact, that was a big consideration in, in providing a service such as we offer, and that was to make sure that we could get Grandma or Uncle Joe to use the service without... Plug it in a port. That's it. Go. Right. All right, so w what are the options we have on the back here, Kevin? Well, starting at the top is the phone it's jack. It's your phone lines. And uh, you plug your phone line in, and that has the DSL signal on it. Got it. Uh, you plug your power in there. So the box has its own power. That's correct. So and what are we doing with USB ports? Well, 
uh, USB, if you have a modern computer with USB on it, then you plug in vis a vis USB. Okay, okay. Or if you, if you have a home network, you, got it. you probably have 10 base T, e, uh, otherwise called Ethernet, got you it. can plug in there. And you can actually plug this in through the parallel port? That's right. There's a whole lot of computers out there that have neither USB or Ethernet. And if you want to just have a box show so up, so just at the like house, a zip drive, you just plug it in that that's parallel it. port. That's it. Just in and that out. easy. Yeah. Okay, so that would be the box. So this is a do-it-yourself DSL solution, right? I don't need some guy from the phone company to come in and do anything for me. That's right. That's the technology. All right. What? Let's talk about first of all. What is the? I know it varies, but generally the X factor. How much faster am I going to get with DSL than I would with the dial-up? Well, typically it ranges from 20 to 50 times, depending upon your current rate. Faster than a 28A, 56K? Uh, uh, 20 times faster than a 56K modem. All right, so the, the best, the worst performance I would get would be 20 times faster. About 20 times faster, yes. All right, first issue, a lot of people just cannot get DSL. How do you find out if DSL is available in your area? Well, uh, it all depends on what phone company uh, you're tied right. to and where our service is. Well, well, let's is. go to your website. You actually have a way of checking out and seeing if it's available. So just how would you do that? Right. Well, everybody knows their phone number. So <laughs> if you know your phone number, then that's so all that's So you just stick your required. phone number in, and the website will say, yes, you can get it or you can't. Right. So let's just go try a phone number that I know we're, we're in that service area. Okay. Um, and again, you know, lots of people offer DSL. We're talking about your particular... Correct. version of it here. So it goes, checks our database to see whether or not uh, okay. services so if you happen available. to be in that area, it says, hey, cool, you can now get Velocity. That's right. All right. Assuming I sign up for DSL and, uh, and I'm doing everything now, uh, well, first of all, you should point out, it's not just faster, right? I mean, if you have a DSL service, your web, your, your net service is always up there. It's always on. And there's so it's not dial up, log off, dial up, log off. That's right. We, we honestly believe that's going to change the way people deal with the network. Because Absolutely. instead of having to power the computer up, log in, get the, the, the negotiated yeah. rate, it's there. You're you going to use up. it more because it's always there. Absolutely. Show us a, a, a basic thing. I mean, just going from site to site is often painful on a, you know, on a, on a dial up modem. Uh, we, have, we have a DSL line uh, hooked up here. All right, so let's see how fast you can really surf with this stuff and show us some cool sites. Great. We'll go down to the favorites here, and uh, of course I like Snap. We're going to go there because they have a high-speed internet uh, panel if you do have a high-speed service. And things just pop up in front of you. All right, and there's a lot of stuff going on there, a lot of graphics, and, uh, and I might point out we're on a network here, so it could slow things down. Yeah. But I should point out we have cleared the cache. This is not coming out of cache. We're really real-time pulling these it's sites a, down. It's an honest demonstration. Okay. I like Hollywood.com. So click another one. They've got lots of movies here if you like that yeah, kind of thing. A lot of stuff, pretty quick. And then another, another similar one. site is uh, the Internet Movie Database. And there you go. It took a little time to get there, yeah. but once it got there, it just zoomed right in. All right, not too bad. Uh, let me ask about some other things, downloads. I, if I'm pulling down MP3 files, you know, 20 minutes to download a song, how's that going to work on DSL? Well, it's not going to take you 20 minutes. It'll only be one minute or less because of the speed. All right, finally we hear about multimedia video. I'd actually watch a movie on the computer and it's going to look like a movie if I've got DSL speed. Right. you have a demo you can show us I that? I sure do. Uh, the experience is a lot better than dial-up. Uh, okay, this and this is, this is real again. We're really online now? We are. Yeah, so this is not a canned demo. So current running movie. Yeah. And pretty smooth, pretty smooth, yeah. All right, big difference. Uh, what does it cost me to have DSL service? $49.95. All right, so you guys charge $49.95, but in general, if you have other providers, it's in that sort of 50 About the same ballpark. Range. Range. And, yeah. and you might have to pay for the box. Sometimes you do. Right. Uh, typically, it's about 100 But bucks. I can install it myself. You can install it yourself. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. All right. All right, coming up next, a look at cable modems and getting your internet service via satellite. We'll be right back. For most people, the fastest internet service available now is the cable modem using your existing cable TV wires and some special 
hardware and software on your PC. The leader in this area right now is at home, actually now called Excite at Home. And here to show us what it takes to set up a cable modem is Eric Alia. How are you doing, Eric? Hi there. How are you? Uh, okay, I said it's the fastest. How fast is a cable modem? Well, conceivably, you can get up to 10 megabits per second How about to really? your computer. Really, you get about 3 to 4 megabits per second. Depends on the speed of your computer, which right. plays into Still it. Still pretty darn fast. Pretty darn maybe fast. 60 to 100 times faster sure, than Sure, and it's, it's actually what you get in the office at a T1 connection or a little bit faster than that. Okay. So if you're used to that high speed performance in the office, this is what you can get. Now at some home. people have cable modem and say, hey, but sometimes it slows down because you're really kind of routing a network and if a lot of people are on it, you don't get that performance. Well, we're still accessing the general internet, so it depends on the content provider that uh -huh. you're going to. It is a shared connection. We're sharing about 30 megabits to about 100 homes. So that plays against some of the competition, which is a one megabit dedicated connection. So effectively, right. it's a bursty medium. Everyone is not downloading a trial of Dreamweaver yeah. at the same <laughs> time. So if you, and no one's running websites out of their basements. This is a residential okay, service or a professional you. service. Now, the other issue with cable modem is mm -hmm. access. I right. mean, the fact is we cannot get cable modem right here in the studio. I mean, we can't get your service up here. Right. What's, in, what's the deal? Well, there? we're in a, in a commercial lo location in a business park. It's a residential right. service where you can get cable TV. That's why we can't get it here. Okay. The service is available in over 100 markets. We have over 1 million subscribers. It's the largest broadband, single broadband audience okay. in the world. It's 20 cable partners that we work but with. But before in the you US get excited, you better call up your cable company. Absolutely. Or you can visit our website, www.home.com, okay. put in your zip code and see if it's available. Now, if I order a cable modem, or is at home my ISP now? Yes, at home is your ISP. And what about my browser? Can I use my existing you browser? You can use your IE or your Netscape, or we offer a customized version with some shortcuts to email help and things okay, like that. Okay, what about like I have got AOL, all of my buddies, and all that stuff? If you wanted to, you could still keep that. AOL, I think, gives you a discount. They still charge for the AOL service unlike a Yahoo or an mm -hmm. Excite, but you can keep all of that. Or you could just go download that AOL Instant Messenger okay, and, and be able that. to chat with your friends. But you can get anywhere on the net through the at-home okay. service. All right, so this is an example of one of the cable modems. And normally the cable guy comes into your house and installs this whole thing for right. you and runs the wire. Exactly. And pretty straightforward in the back. I mean, you plug in the cable, huh? Right. And then there's an Ethernet wire. It goes to your home network hub right. or to your computer. Okay. No RJ11 here, no phone line. No. So I assume this is cable up up and down. Two way, baby. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's go on the site. And again, okay. to be fair, we don't really have cable modem service here, but let's demonstrate right, but some of the things get a feel we would what find we're to do here. on your service. It's fast. It's also always on. So we're trying to make people's lives easier to enrich them. It's task So again, oriented. no logging on, logging off. Exactly. You turn on your browser, you're online. It's graphically rich. We try to provide some interactivity. The red words are hot. These are things you can do okay. elsewhere Okay. Now, do you have service. special content that takes advantage of the speed you yes, guys we, have? Yes, we work with quite a few different content partners. I can go into our news section, for instance. This is in the information space. We work with a lot of people in the All entertainment right. space as well. And so, I, for instance, I can go into our Fox News video area. And here you'll get your video news on demand. So, so if I want to watch a newscast, this is like the, the dream. Exactly. I just click and say, now's when I want to watch exactly. this. Exactly. So instead of stories? waiting for an hour to watch right. the controversy about McCain right, or, or right, whatever, right. You can watch that news clip when and how you want it. So, for instance, I can watch something, uh, The Prince of Hollywood, Leonardo DiCaprio, talking about his new movie, The Beach. The video quality that you find here. Marginally news. Is, well, this is marginally gotcha. news, but it's but, but, entertaining. But anyway, right? you do entertainment too, but, right? You get the typical but movie trailer. The size trailers. and the quality is the thing to look at here. Yeah. It's, it's bigger than what you'd find, it's bigger than a postage stamp. The right. quality is, is pretty fine. It's 15 frames a second or so. Yeah, and again, we're not really going your speed. We're if somebody actually wanted to see what a cable modem looks like, where can you go see They can go to their cable office, call ahead of time. Most of the cable offices and the cable companies that we work with will show their service in the office. Okay. Uh, any other content you want to show us or things sure, you point out in terms of how to, to use it? We can go to um, our How Do I section where, since it's always on, we're trying to help people manage their lives easier. So movie tickets, things like that, mm -hmm. we're trying to, directions, yellow pages. Food recipes. We're trying to take a few steps out of that process. Got it. A little computer so crash. A little here. Computer not your crash, issue. Not us. Not that's, your uh, issue. That's not one a of problem. Our partner software. Is providers. the goal sometime to have everybody who's cable be able to get cable modem? Oh, sure. Absolutely. We pass about 72 million homes okay. in North America with a presence overseas. These guys Japan, are out there wiring Australia like as well. mad. They're wiring as fast <laughs> as they can. So within a few years, we'd like to have that entire audience have Eric, that service a lot. available. Thank you. All right. Well, the problem with cable modems and DSL, as we've talked about, as a broadband solution is they may not be available where you live because they depend on wires coming into your house. 
So if you're stuck living somewhere that isn't plugged into high-speed lines, you can still get broadband net access using a satellite dish. Here to show us that option is Sam Bommel of DirectPC. How are you doing, Sam? Great, great, thank you. All right, so let's talk about uh, access here. Now, the whole point is anybody who can see the sky can use DirectPC service. Exactly. You have to look to the south, obviously. If you live in a forest or you live behind a high-rise to right. the south, you may have a problem. But uh, we pass all homes, effectively. We have a footprint that covers the entire United States. Right. So if, if you're a DirecTV subscriber, mm -hmm. that's the same idea, basically? Yes, exactly. If you can see DirecTV, if you have DirecTV mm -hmm. service, you can certainly subscribe to DirecPC. It's in the same part of the sky, generally. Okay, but different satellite, different dish. Exactly. We use a slightly larger dish. We operate okay. up a slightly different type of satellite, but you can certainly uh, use the same dish with a slightly modified uh, feed arm to receive direct TV and direct PC. Got it's it. called direct duo. All right, uh, what's the speed of direct PC service? Typically bursts up to 400 kilobits per second in web surfing applications. All right, so you this is sort of DSL range or something like that? In the, in the same general range. One of the things that you'll find, regardless of the broadband technology, uh -huh. is that when you're aggressively, actively surfing on the web, Whenever you get a broadband connection, you'll find that most of the time, the site that you're going to is going to be sure, the bigger sure, limiting factor sure, than gotcha. the pipe itself. Uh, I keep my ISP if I'm using DirectPC? If you want to keep your existing ISP, that's no problem. Okay. You can add the satellite service, DirectPC service on top. If you want to use Got us it. as the ISP, we have a bundle as well. All right, so you're really just the, the pipe coming into me, and I can keep my same kind of browser, my same ISP if I well, want we to. Well, we are, we are also building uh, partnerships and developing programs with people like Broadcast.com, where we're actually encoding events and broadcasting them to all of our customers so that you will get the benefit of broadband okay. and satellite is actually the best technology for broadcast. All right, Sam, given that it is available everywhere, we do have it coming in live now into our studio here. Yes, we do. So let's run through a couple of things. Show us, uh, for, go to, yeah, there's your sort of homepage, I guess. Yeah, what we have an electronic program guide. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things that we do is we actually broadcast the top websites onto your hard drive. So for and example, explain what you mean by that. Because it's a satellite technology, we can actually broadcast efficiently the, ba the major You're content. You're sort of pushing all the stuff onto my hard drive. Pushing true multicast data into your hard drive. So instead of putting it at a head end that's uh -huh. miles away, it can actually be stored locally. All right, which so my is access can really be fast because you're putting on a hard drive and then I'm grabbing it off the hard drive. Exactly, and we have about 30 channels that you can subscribe to. Okay. Once we know that, once your software knows that you're looking for them, when the data comes by, it will. So this is kind of like TV here, right? Very similar. Yeah. I mean, basically what you're doing now is uh, if I go to my channels, for example, these we subscribe to, I can, go, to I can go to abcnews.com. That's coming off of my hard drive now. Mm -hmm. It's going to pop up a lot quicker than it would if it were coming off the web via virtually any Right, but if you're going to something brand new, I take it you're popping live and you're really sucking it out of the air in real time? Then you go out on the web. It's, it's relatively yeah. seamless. For example, we have another website that's... Uh, basically online here. This is not webcast. This is the Boeing, uh, the Boeing website. And you can actually pull up a picture of uh, one of their, uh, mm -hmm. this is something that's very large right, content. So you know, we're pulling it's this down live right that's now, obviously. Live coming this is in. Not, not being cached. That, exactly. How delayed is that cache? Is that minutes old, seconds old, hours old? The broadcast caches are, depending on the website, a news website will be up uh, updated three or four times a day. Okay. Uh, Hollywood.com or Disney will probably be updated once or twice a day. So yeah. it really depends on our relationship with the content provider, how often gotcha. we want to update that. On the installation, that. we actually have your dish right out our little window here. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I self-install that like I can with my DirecTV dish, or should I really have somebody climb up the roof and do it? Well, the funny thing is a lot of people do install it themselves. You obviously installed your own DirecTV oh, dish. Oh, I tell you when, you, when you get that signal, it's the most exciting moment of your day. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but we have professional installation available. It's very inexpensive, about $100 for a standard installation. And the modem that you use plugs into your USB port, so it's very simple okay. to install the modem. Now, with the satellite, though, this is one way, right? I'm using the phone to get up to the website and using your satellite to come down. Exactly. One of the benefits of using the phone line is you can see we're pointing and clicking. We're not sending a lot of data out to the web. What right. we're doing is requesting a lot of okay. rich it's content. It's not, not a big deal because the data going up generally is pretty small. Little bits. Phone lines are unless fine for that. Unless you're running a website. Yeah. Unless you're, yeah, unless you're running <laughs> okay. your own website. So what's this? This is a diagram that basically explains how it works. You dial out. You go through the Internet, through your ISP, whether it's us or another, to our network operations mm -hmm. center. We grab the content from the web and put it up over the satellite and deliver Got it to it. you. Uh, with, this, with this caching business, do I have to allocate a big hunk of my hard drive to my direct PC server? We recommend about 400 megabytes be available, okay. but you can determine when you sign on for each one of the sites, gotcha. it will tell you how much you should put aside, 20 megs, okay. 30 megs, 50 megs, whatever. Sounds great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right, that's our look at high-speed internet.
internet access. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, a new real way to play virtual pool. Now for my pick of the week. Sports simulations on computers have gotten a lot better over the years as processor speed and graphics have improved, but the weak link continues to be input devices. A mouse or a keyboard is just not the same as a real golf club or a baseball bat. But if you're into indoor sports like pool, playing billiards, there is now an answer to having to hit the ball by shoving a mouse at it. This is Pool Shark from a company called Interact. It uses something they call real field technology. Indeed, when you play this computer pool game, you use the real thing, a pool cue. This collapsible cue stick comes with the package, which also includes this gadget, which actually reads your stroke and translates it into real action on the pool table on the screen. Pool Shark comes bundled with two great pool games, Virtual Pool 2 and Ultimate 8 Ball. Let me show you how it works, keeping in mind I'm not too good at this. The cradle or the cue stick controller actually functions like a mouse, so you can move around the table, see the whole table, and actually pick the particular shot you want and how you're going to position the ball. I'll leave it just about right there. Then when you're ready to shoot, you just shoot. You position your hand on the cue stick and on the cradle here, and you just pull back and take a lousy shot like that. All right. The cue stick cradle, by the way, comes with a switch over here, so it does work for lefties or righties. It also doubles as a standard mouse if you want. It plugs into a USB port, so setup is plug and play. And of course, you can set up online games and take on other players on the net. It's a lot of fun. The cost is under $40. That's it for this week's edition of Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. If you need any more information on anything you saw, please check out our website. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and I hope we'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on The Computer Chronicles, playing music on your PC. We'll show you how to create your own personalized music CDs. We'll tell you how to add real-time music to your website. You can now compose and create music on your computer even if you've never studied music. And forget digital keyboards, this is a complete computerized piano that will teach you how to play it. Plus my pick of the week, a new portable MP3 player that can put your entire music collection in your pocket. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicle. is talking to each other. The best of Comdex coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles.